Hello and welcome to another interesting edition of the program Service to Humanity, your window into the activities of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, as well as her agencies as a partner in carrying out its mandate to develop humanitarian policies, coordinate national and international humanitarian interventions, and fight poverty, among others. I am Habiba Zaksak, your regular anchor. Tonight's episode looks at the recent NPAR and skills training which took place nationwide with a focus on the Northwest Center where youths were trained on various crafts to help them become self-reliant. In line with that, we shall bring you testimonies from beneficiaries of that training. Details of this and more coming your way shortly. I tell you anytime we're not producing the fish farmers suffer. The people we engage suffer. The people we feed that we give our fish heads to them. They feel it. I only beg the government to continue with this and make it grow more. We used to have children crying, parents will be chasing them to come to school and they will be at the gate, they will be crying, they will hold on to their parents, they will not want to come into the gate. When they are not giving the food, some the attendance was very low. Now the children are always fit and healthy because of the food we eat. We make them attend class every day. I eat rice, plates and carrots. I want to use this opportunity to thank the federal government for the feeding the program. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Thanks for staying tuned. We begin the program with the Management Diary and we bring you news on recent happenings in the Humanitarian Ministry as well as her agencies. On the news, Humanitarian Minister presents 2023 budget proposal to Senate Committee on Special Duties, just as federal government disburses cash grants to over 3,400 vulnerable groups in Kogi. Details of this and more coming your way shortly. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development Hadia Sadia Umar Farouk has presented the Ministry's 2023 Budget Estimate to the Senate Committee on Special Duties at the National Assembly, Abuja. According to the Minister, who was accompanied by the Permanent Secretary and Directors of the Ministry, the total sum of about 35.6 billion naira only was allocated to the ministry's headquarters in the 2022 Appropriation Act. The budget solely includes a total recurrent expenditure of about 1.734 billion naira only and a total capital allocation of 34.5 billion naira. Regarding the performance of the 2022 budget, the minister disclosed that as of September 30th, 2022, only 291,652,083.36 or 58.3% of the total overhead expenditure had been released, while about 810.6 million naira or 48.00% had been released for capital expenditure for the same period. Farouk further stated that implementation of the budget for overhead has reached 98.76% while 99% of the total capital releases had been used and committed to finance capital projects for the ministry. On the 2023 budget estimate, the minister stated that the ministry's 2023 overhead ceilings was increased from the sum of about 500 billion naira in 2022 to the sum of 512.5 billion naira in 2023. These represent a 7% increase over that of 2022 to cushion the effect of inflation. Earlier in his remarks, Senator Yusuf Yusuf said, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Special Duties praised the minister and her team for the success of the 2022 budget and urged the ministry to step up its efforts in implementing its humanitarian programs and interventions in the nation. The federal government, through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, has commenced the disbursement of 20,000 Naira grants for vulnerable groups, GVG, in Kogi State. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, 
Haji Sadia Umar Farooq, who was represented by the Director of Special Duties in the Ministry, Mrs. Nadia Soso Mohammed said, their target was to disburse the grant to 3,415 beneficiaries across the 21 local government areas of Kogi. Farooq said, the NSIP remains a project that is consistent with the deliberate national agenda of President Mohamed Buhari to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by 2030. She added that President Buhari, through his deliberate social inclusion agenda, had directed that 70% of the beneficiaries should be women and 30% youth, while 15% of the total beneficiaries would be allocated to the people with special needs and the senior citizens. In his remarks, the Kogi state governor, who was represented by the head of service, Mrs. Hannah Odio, thanked the president and the minister for all the various intervention programs that the federal government had put in place for Kogi people and Nigeria at large, and for identifying with the people of Kogi during the flood disaster that ravaged the states. Welcome back. In October 2022, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development announced the commencement of training of 23,991 N-Skills beneficiaries on 11 additional trades nationwide. To this end, youth from all parts of the country were assembled in the various centers located in the six geopolitical zones of the nation for six weeks in-house training on various skills. Our crew visited the National Institute for Transport Technology, NITT, Zaria Kaduna State, which housed the training for the Northwest Zone to bring us stories of the training. Let's see how it went. National Institute of Transport Technology, Zaria Kaduna State housed the Northwest End Skills Beneficiaries, a program which was created based on a certification system and an accreditation of practical training provided through the informal training system. The training manager of the Northwest Training Center, Abubakar Imrana, tells us more on the various programs carried out at the center. We have three different threats under End Skills. We have the auto mechanic, we have uh, the aluminum assembly and fabrication. Then we have the vulcanizing beneficiaries. So for the vulcanizing beneficiaries so far, we have registered 55 beneficiaries. Yes. Then for auto mechanic, we registered about 80 now. Then for aluminum and uh, assembly and fabrication, which has the highest number, we have registered 133 so far. Yes, taking the total tally to 268 or thereabout. On mobilization, welfare and allowances, Imrana shares with us how the beneficiaries were taken care of. All of them were notified through either uh, SMS, that is messages, or phone calls or bots. Yes. And on arrival, we normally register them, then give them accommodation. And the next day, the normal procedure is that the next day, they will be given their transport allowance, which is 15,000 Naira each. So that is the normal routine. For effective training and eventual takeoff during and after the training, beneficiaries of the end skills are also given training materials. These comprises of branded t-shirts and face caps, writing materials, and starter packs. We went round the center to see things for ourselves. Our first stop was the auto mechanics unit where beneficiaries were being trained on vehicle braking system. Instructor for the auto mechanic unit, Al Hassan Aliyu, speaks on the training offered to the beneficiaries and their level of commitment. I've trained them uh, the role auto mechanic can play 
uh, and help the society. And I take them uh, concerning uh, the tools to use uh, in the workshops and their safety to, uh, before starting any job. And actually, I've taught them how to uh, dismantle and tackle different problems of vehicles and the specialization they can do in the auto mechanic field, which I let them to know that they can specialize in uh, panel beating, painting, uh, upholstery, uh, AC repairs, electricians, and mechanic jobs. So, which actually they are, the students are really in cooperation with me, they are ready to learn. Everything uh, I've taught them, and basically, uh, you know, at least it's not all that they will have here. At least they need more time for practicals as they are rounding up the program. So maybe if there is a room for them, after this, they can extend to other workshops to conduct the practical so that they can get familiar with the uh, uh, life vehicles outside uh, the premises. Engineer Mohammed Jia heads the welding and fabrication unit of NITT. He also shares with us areas beneficiaries of the program were trained. Basically, fabrication uh, is a process. We touch through the processes. We started with the most important part is that is safety. Safety of self, safety of equipment and of the environment. Then we went on to learn measurements which is another major thing in fabrication, not just in aluminium fabrication, generally fabrication. We taught them measurements, marking out, and then we went on into the processes. We started with drilling, we riveted, we drilled, we learned welding, just like we have seen in previous clips. We saw our students welding, and it's one of the process. Uh, the last process that we'll be working on is profile cutting, screwing, glass cutting and assembly. Engineer Jia believes this initiative of the federal government would help in the fight against poverty in Nigeria. The president has promised to reduce unemployment and poverty in Nigeria and that's a program of the federal government to reduce uh, poverty by 100 million. So I think this program is in line with that program. It's also in line with the mandate of the the, uh, the Institute, the Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology, it has the mandate of training middleman power skill. So the uh, service provider coming here all fit together to achieve uh, that uh, mandate that Mr. President has given. Instructor for Vulcanizing Unit, Engineer Salu Ahmed, shares with us what trainees in his unit were taught. The students, I was able to take them in vulcanizing, having studied in various aspects of tire, what exactly it takes to be in a tire. Starting from the introduction of vulcanizing, what vulcanizing is, telling the type of tires, what is made of tire, the constituent of tire, and what, what are likely the damages and the causes of tire, um, tire damages. Then, in that aspect, we also learned about what as is tire expiry dates. What are the tire sizes? What is the weight? And what exactly is the radial type of tire? Especially because most of them, they could find themselves that somebody, okay, doesn't know about tire and they come for orientation or they come for consultations. Now, if this knowledge is not impacted on them, how do you think they are going to advise? Today, I'm, I'm trying to let them know that they are not only students, they are coming professionals in the field. Now, if I professional, you are not able to prophesize what exactly is good. And letting them to know that they are not only even vulcanizers, they are more than a doctor. Doctor treats one person, but they treat more than one person because a single tire can kill so many. So therefore, they need to have that very uh, training, just the opportunity to have it now. Another interesting program beneficiaries were on is software development. The instructor, Ahmed Ibrahim, shares with us the training given to the beneficiaries. Web development is big and we've take, take it, we took it step by step, starting with um, HTML and uh, CSS, we've done JavaScript, PHP, those are the things we've done. And then the graphic design, and we've used um, Canva and uh, CorelDRAW, CorelDRAW Photoshop. 
So that's what we've done. Now, this week, and we've done assessments. Uh, every step we take, we give, we spend days and we give time to practice it. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, now, this week is for, is for uh, digital marketing. That's what we are doing this week. Then next week, we are, we are going to do a PHP. Ibrahim speaks on the zeal of the beneficiaries to learn more on the subjects they have been taught. At first, we're not really into it, but now, um, they've, after taking it, after some time, spending time to really appreciate it, now they are really, really committed. So we spend time, some, some of them even call me at night, like they meet me at home, like, like on phone, via phone, they talk to me almost always, asking questions. You know, some browsing things, trying new things, a lot of them, yeah. So we've seen improvement, a lot of improvement and commitment. But I'm really, really confident about uh, what will happen later. Some of them will really go far, further uh, ahead. Uh, they will go, they'll do great things. I have confidence, a lot of it. The instructors have some words of advice for the beneficiaries. As soon as they leave here, at least they should not just go home and sit down thinking that they have learned uh, what they have learned and leave it to go like this. You know, practice make perfect in this kind of skilled jobs. You need to be practicing daily, daily basis, on a daily basis. On the daily basis you are practicing, you are learning too. So definitely they should not go out and sit down. They should look for other workshops and attach themselves there to participate in the, uh, what they have learned. You are still watching Service to Humanity, a program that brings to you strides of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development and her agencies. Still on the Empire and Skills Training, beneficiaries of the program have stepped forward to share their joy for getting the opportunity to acquire skills that would bring about a positive change in their lives. Let's hear from them as they appreciate the federal government for this initiative. Costs of skill acquisition and entrepreneurship as we know today is no doubt very expensive. Due to this fact, a lot of young Nigerians who wish to learn one skill or another to earn a living are most times left helpless. The creation of the End Skills program under the End Power by the federal government has become a breather for most of these youths as they get a chance to learn and acquire the skill they always wanted. With a free training, monthly stipends and a starter pack to help them begin their journey to independence and entrepreneurship, the End Skills is indeed an initiative worthy to be uploaded. Lawal Ibrahim used to be a shoe and bag maker. On getting to know about the End Skills program, he registered under the Auto Mechanics Unit. He tells us his experience at the training. We learned how to take safety measures before work. Our instructor has taught us how to protect ourselves and how to entertain customers if they come for work. So we are under the Auto Mechanic Unit. The auto mechanic unit has different areas. On one side, there is panel beating section. For example, a damaged car. We are taught by the instructor how to fix it. If you bring us a car, we can fix it. And we have been taught how to paint a car after an accident. So now we can actually paint a car. And there's the area of wiring that involves lighting and electrical works. By God's grace, we've been taught how to fix them. And the area of engine. If a car engine is brought to us, God willing, we will be able to fix it. Ibrahim shares with us his plans for the future as he appreciates the federal government for the opportunity. I came here with the intention of being an auto mechanic and we hope by God's grace to open a car garage and also employ others who did not get this kind of opportunity. This will help them to stand on their feet. Before, the poor man has no knowledge of government's interventions, except for this government. 
God has sent us a person who loves the masses and cares about them. It is now we know we have a government because we hear of different government interventions. So we want to appreciate the president and the minister Sadia Umar Farooq for her efforts to assist the masses. Abu Bakr Nasiru, another beneficiary under the auto mechanics unit, is a person living with disability. Before now, he used to be a motorcycle electrician. Not allowing his challenge to pull him down, Nasiru decided to expand his knowledge and skills by learning how to repair cars, which according to him, has been a long-term goal. I have learned a lot of things. By God's grace, I am here now. If a car is faulty, I can now be able to fix it. I came here to avoid humiliation. Because sometimes if you go around begging people, one may get badly treated. When I saw this, I said to myself that I can't take it anymore. It's better I acquire skills for myself. So now I can team up with others in this profession to open a business. It's better than being a beggar. Abu Bakr Sani holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Hausa from Federal University Dusenmark as an estate, but had no job upon graduation. Sani speaks on the knowledge he has acquired, noting that their instructor gave them the best training and encouragement. When we arrived, we were given an instructor to show us how to do the vulcanizing work. We enjoyed his training and lecture, and the instructor has given his best in training us. Mariam Nuhu from the vulcanizing unit speaks on her choice of a skill that is known in this part of the world to be for men as she appreciates the federal government. There is so much progress now because what we see mostly is men dominating the profession but now there are women. All we can say is that we have a business and we can open a shop and employ someone too. There is nothing we can say to government but thank you. Ismail Bashir, a trainee from the graphic and software design, had no prior knowledge of a computer. He shares his experience at the training. But after we come, they have started teaching us right from how to boot the computer. That is booting process. Then the small knowledge from the scratch. They will start teaching us how to use Microsoft Word, how to write a document using Microsoft Word, how to edit it, how to format it, how to set fonts, how to put pictures, how to put everything using Microsoft Word. Then from Microsoft Word, we move to HTML. That is a hypertext markup language, which is a computer programming language. So in HTML, they are like building blocks, how to build a website. So using tags, attributes, and all of that. So after doing that, they gave us assignment. I did like a form, internet form, and I start a free hosting website. I host my own. I even have the link right now. Saudato Aminu is a tailor who chose to get trained in graphic and software design. She also speaks on learning such a trade as a woman and her future plans. My plan is that even if a woman gets buried, she can continue to work because this is no difficult matter. It does not require a woman going out of her home. One can be at home and still work as well as teach others. I have a message for Mr. President. We are glad and we appreciate. The prosperity of any country depends ultimately in the number of persons in employment, whether in the public or private sector, and how productive they are at work. And that sums up our package for this week. Until I come your way again next week, stay safe. Don't forget to send in questions and suggestions to any of our social media platforms or drop a message on the ministry's page on Facebook or Twitter as shown on your screen. See you next week.